Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a WordPress website on the Google Cloud platform for free. That's right, free hosting, free storage space, and free bandwidth every single month. Restrictions apply. I'll get into those in the video. But the point here is that you can get started with the Google Cloud platform without spending a dime. Now, I'll be the first to admit that the restrictions we're working with are pretty tight. The server is going to have less than one gigabyte of RAM, about 30 gigabytes of storage space and one gigabyte of monthly transfer. But as long as you stay within those restrictions, your website is literally free forever. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. I have already signed up for my Google Cloud Platform account and I'm logged in at console.cloud.google.com up here as you can see. And what we wanna do is click on the navigation menu on the left and go down to the compute engine. In here, we want to create a virtual machine instance, a VM instance, so go ahead and click on create. And you can call your instance whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine WordPress test. Okay, now here is where some of those restrictions are gonna take place as we define our server. I'll put something up on the screen here that will uh, that we can reference as we build our server. So basically the region we are allowed to be in is either Oregon, Iowa, or South Carolina. So we have Iowa selected here, that is fine for now, and you can pick whatever zone you want within Iowa. I'll stick with the default A. Now, as far as the machine configuration, we want to make sure that we're picking the N1 first generation, which is an Intel Skylake CPU. Um, so make sure you select that, and we'll go ahead and expand these details. Right now, please ignore these pricings. This is gonna be, um, we're gonna get this down to zero dollars. Well, technically around $5 per month, but that's gonna be absolutely free for you. Now, the next thing you wanna change is the machine type. This one, we want the F1 micro instance, which as I referenced earlier, it is 614 megabytes of memory, less than a gigabyte of RAM. That's okay, go ahead and pick that. We are down to $4.28 per month. Let's go change our uh, operating system and our disk drive, our disk space. So we can do that in here. And I'm gonna pick Ubuntu. You can pick any of these without, um, I think without any extra charge. So I'm gonna pick Ubuntu. And the version I'm gonna select is Ubuntu 20.04 LTS for long-term support. And as you can still see on the screen here, the size, the max size that you can have here is 30 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Select that to apply the changes. And now up here, our total is $5.08 per month. But you can see here that your first 744 hours of this instance usage are free this month. And so what does that mean? 744 hours. Well, if you do uh, 31 days in a month times 24 hours in a day, you'll see that equals 744 hours, which means essentially this is 100% free. You're not gonna be charged anything for creating this instance. Now, the only other thing we wanna do on this page is to make sure that we allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic but other than that, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and create this virtual machine. And this will take, I've seen anywhere from 20 seconds up to a couple minutes. So instead of wasting your time, I'm gonna pause the video and I'll get back with you when it finishes. All right guys, and about 15 seconds later, we're good to go. Our instance has been created. As you can see here, WordPress test within the Iowa zone. And it has this external IP address that's listed here. Now this is the point in the tutorial where if you do want to associate a domain name with this server, we're going to go ahead and do that. If not, you can go ahead and skip through this part. What I'm going to do is copy this IP address, this external IP address, and go to the place where I bought my domain name, which is DreamHost. And this will work anywhere where you get your domain name. The same concept will apply. All you have to really do is come into your DNS settings and create an A record for your IP address. So the the type is the type of the record is A and the value is going to be the IP address. So we'll go ahead and add that record. And there's one more record that we wanna add and that's gonna be for the www version of our website. So www.tonyflorida.me, that's the domain name that we're working with. Let's add that record as well. And this takes some time to propagate, so it's a good thing we're doing this at this point in the tutorial. Now we have two 
a records for our domain name tonyflorida.me one for just tonyflorida.me and one for www.tonyflorida.me both pointing to the ip address of our server okay now that that's out of the way let's go back over to the google cloud platform and log into our server via ssh now typically you would do this with either the g cloud command i'll have a video on that or you could use your terminal window or putty if you're using a windows computer but because we don't know the root password yet, we have to do it in a web browser. And it's really cool they have it set up for you where you could just click on that. And this will go ahead and transfer your SSH keys to the VM, which is a secure way of connecting to the virtual machine. Um, again, this will take just anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes to start up. So I'll pause the video here and catch up with you when it finishes. All right, guys, we're in. We are logged into the remote server via SSH. And as you can see here, we are running Ubuntu 20.04, which is the operating system that we picked when we created this virtual instance. Now, the first thing we want to do before we go ahead and install WordPress and all the dependencies is to update our system. And we can do that with sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. So go ahead and execute that command. By the way, all of these commands in this tutorial will be linked in the description below. Uh, so you can copy and paste them instead of typing them from the screen. They will be on my blog at tonyteaches.tech. So check those out. When this is finished, I'm gonna hit Y to continue. When this is finished, I'll catch back up with you. All right, our system is up to date. That has finished. And the next thing we wanna do is to install a web server. We're gonna be using Nginx a database. We're going to be using Maria database, which is a MySQL database and PHP, all of which are necessary for WordPress to run. So let's go ahead and do that with this command here, apt to get install nginx Maria database server, PHP FPM and PHP MySQL. So hit enter and this will take a little bit longer. It's 199 megabytes of space. Same thing as before. I will pause the video, catch back up with you when it finishes. Okay, now that we have all that software installed, let's check what version we have for PHP, and that is 7.4. We'll use this a little bit later, and let's check our MySQL version. Like I said, we're using Maria database, and that is version 15.1. Now, Let's work on our database. Okay, first let's secure a database with the MySQL secure installation command. And this is asking us for our current root password. We don't have one, but we do want to set one. So type Y and go ahead and type a password and confirm that password. And pretty much for the rest of this, we will type in Y to accept the defaults. And this again is securing our MySQL database installation. Now that we have that all set up, we can go ahead and log into our MySQL server with sudo mysql-u for user root-p for password. Type in the password that you just created. And now we, are, we have a MySQL console. And what we want to do is to create a database for our WordPress website. Again, all of these commands will be available on my website, which is linked below. First thing you want to do is to create a database called example underscore DB. And then we want to create a user with a password with create user. His name is going to be example username, and he is going to have a password that is example underscore password. In reality, you're going to want to make these uh, more secure and suiting to your needs as far as the names and the passwords are concerned. Anyway, uh, let's grant all privileges on the database to this user as long as he's on this local host. So execute that. And then finally, we want to flush the privileges, which is essentially applying our changes. And then we can exit out of our MySQL command prompt. Now let's go into the var www directory and in here is the default place for websites. All the website files are usually living under here. As you can see, there's an HTML directory. We're going to go ahead and make our WordPress website in a directory under here called WordPress. So let's go to the official WordPress website. We're going to use the wget command to download the latest version of WordPress as an archive. So execute that command here. And once we have that, we can go ahead and extract it. So right now it's just going to be a tar file, which is basically like a zip file. Uh, we can extract that with sudo tar zxvf 
the name of the archive. And then finally, we want to remove that tar file because we don't need it anymore. So we can do that with rm latest.tar.gz. So now we have that WordPress directory. We want to change the owner of this WordPress directory to the www data user in the www data group. That's what the syntax does right here. And we're going to do that recursively for everything inside of the WordPress directory. So go ahead and execute that. Now that's all we need to do for WordPress so far. Let's just take a peek inside of here. We have all of these PHP files and other configuration files that are necessary for WordPress to run default out of the box. So let's go ahead and move on and work on our web server. Again, that we're gonna be using Nginx. So we can go into the etc Nginx directory. And in here, we have a few directories and configuration files, but we're gonna be working out of the sites available directory. And in here, we have our default configuration file. We're gonna actually make a new configuration file. I'm gonna call mine tonyflorida.me.conf and it's just usually the name of your domain name followed by .conf. And I'm gonna be using the Vim text editor. If you don't know how to use that, I'll have a, a video about how to use that or you can use a different text editor to edit this file. So um, what I'm gonna do is copy in the configuration file content and paste that in. And this is a little overwhelming for a lot of people, but let's just go through it real quick. Um, we're gonna be listening on port 80, which is the default HTTP port. We have our server name, which is my domain name and the www version of the domain name, which you saw earlier. We already set up those DNSA records to point to this IP address. So that's all linked up. Our WordPress website exists at this directory on our file system and our index of our website, the first, the home page uh, file is called index.php. Now, the only other thing I wanna point out here is that we are using PHP version 7.4 like we checked earlier, so that's why we have this referenced up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that file. And in order for those changes to be visible, we have to sim link from the sites available directory, our configuration file that we just created to the sites enabled directory. And we can do that with the ln-s command. So that looks good. And finally, let's restart our Nginx web server with systemctl restart Nginx. And we didn't get any output, no errors or anything like that. So I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get out of this console window for now open up a new tab and go to tonyflorida.me and this is great this is the installation for wordpress it's reading our uh, system our i it's basically has gone to the ip address look did the dns lookup and is now serving the files from the var www wordpress directory so let's go ahead and go through this installation we can click continue for english um, we have all of this information so let's go ahead and set everything up what we're doing here is we're connecting wordpress to the database that we created so the name of our database is called example underscore db our username is wordpress WordPress username. Our password is WordPress password. And uh, no, I'm sorry, it's example password. And example username, I got that wrong. And our database host is localhost, that's fine. And you can change the table of prefix to whatever you want. Let's go ahead and submit this. And this looks good. All right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of the installation. It can communicate with your database. Let's run the installation. And this is where we're going to define our website. So what's the title of our website? I'm just gonna call it Tony Florida. My username for logging into WordPress, I'll say is Tony Florida. And this looks like a good password. I'll copy that onto my clipboard. And my email, Tony at TonyTeaches.tech. Okay, so let's go ahead and install WordPress. And just a couple seconds later, we're good to go. Let's log into WordPress. Username again, Tony Florida. Password, I can paste that from my clipboard. Click that remember me and log in. This is the WordPress admin dashboard. This is where you write posts. You can come in here and write a post, a new blog post, 
and they already have a hello world blog post in there, but uh, that's fine. We'll just say, welcome to Google Cloud Platform. We did it, something like that. So we'll publish our first blog post here and that will be available. Let's view the post. Here's our first blog post, not much there. And you know, if we go to our home page here, this is what that looks like. There's a lot of configuration that you can do here as far as the appearance, adding some plugins, um, all that stuff. I have plenty of other videos on this channel, so check some of those out. But the one thing I do wanna say here is that um, the I wanna talk a little bit more about the pricing. Uh, so as far as this is concerned, if you don't go above one gigabyte per month of transfer, out of your server. If you don't serve more than one gigabyte of pages, then you won't pay a single cent for this website. But if you do go above that threshold, then you will be charged 12 cents per gigabyte. Okay, I'll make, I'll have a whole nother video on this topic, which you can check out here. If you wanna go more in depth with that, I just want you guys to be aware of that. And then also, if you wanna install an SSL certificate on your WordPress website, check out this video here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.